Hi. For those of you who haven't seen Dancing Bears, these are the Dancing Bears. In 95, we started working on a two-year investigative research project to try and find out what was going on, because the sloth bears in the wild were obviously getting depleted because of this. This is the Kalandar community. They're a marginalized Islamic community who uh, live across India, and they've been in India since the 13th century. We went about getting evidence of what was going on, and this is a footage from a hidden camera and a button. And we went in pretending to be buyers, and we found this in, right in this very state in Karnataka. And the bear cubs were being harvested from across the country and being sold and traded. These were being sold for about $2,000 each, and they used for bear paw soup, uh, and also being trained uh, later on to become dancing bears like the one you just saw. Sadly, the family of Kalandars depended on this bear. The couple are barely 18 years old. They already have four children beside them. You can see them. And the economy of the family and the livelihood depended on this animal, so we had to deal with it in a very practical and sustainable manner. Now, when we started working deeper and digging deeper, we found that it's an illegal act. These guys could go to jail for up to seven years if they were caught by authorities. And what they were doing to the bears was really appalling. It was unacceptable. The mother bears are usually killed. The cubs, uh, which are taken, are separated. Their teeth are basically bashed out with a metal rod, and they use a red-hot iron needle to make a hole through the muzzle. Now, we had to start changing these people and converting them from using that for a livelihood to getting something else. So this is Bitu Kalandar, who was our first experiment, and we were so unsure that this would work. We weren't sure at all. And we managed to convince him, and we said, okay, here's some seed fund. Let's see if you can get something else. And we got the bear surrendered to, we set up a sanctuary. We have four sanctuaries in India. And now he sells cool drinks. He's by the highway. He has a, uh, a telephone booth. And then it started. There was no turning back after that. This is Saduwa, who came and surrendered his bear. Now he runs a cattle fodder store and a grain store near Agra. Then there was no looking back at all for us. We, we gave cycle rickshaws, we set up carpet weaving units, vocational training for the women. The women were just not allowed to come out of the community and work with the mainstream society, so we were able to address that. Education, the kids never went to school. They only had Islamic education, very little of it, and they were never allowed to go to school because they were an extra earning hand at home. So we managed to get education, so we sponsor 600 children education programs today. We were able to ensure brighter futures for these people. Of course, we had to also get the bears in. This is what happens to the bears when they come in, and this is what we turn them into. We have a veterinary facility in our rescue centers. So basically, in 2002, there were 1,200 dancing bears, and um, we've rescued over 550 dancing bears. We've been able to ensure better futures for the people and the bears. The big news that I want to announce today is that next month, we will be bringing in the very last bear of India into our rescue center. <laughs> and India, India will no longer have to witness this cruel, barbaric practice which has been here for centuries. And the people can hold their heads up high. And the Kalandar people will rise above all this cruel, barbaric past that they've lived all their lives. And the beautiful bears can, of course, live in the wild again. And there'll be no more removing of these bears. And the children, both humans and bear cubs, can live peacefully. Thank you. Traffic is a global epidemic. U.S. traffic is creating 45% of the world's air pollution. In the U.K., time wasted in traffic costs 20 billion a year. Would you pay for cleaner air and a faster commute? Stockholm put it to a vote. I voted for it, yes. I voted for it. I vote for it. We're not old enough to vote. Vote. <laughs> we had to do something in Stockholm to improve the environment and to get a better flow in the traffic. We put a price on taking your car into the central parts of Stockholm and we call that congestion charges. If you start a system like this and it doesn't work on the first day, then you will be in big trouble. It must be perfect from day one. There are 18 entry gates to the city. Each is equipped with cameras. 
Pictures are taken of the rear and front license plates. These pictures are sent to a central system that identifies the license plates and makes sure that the right person pays for the right passages. One of the obstacles we overcame was the OCR, the optical character reading of the license plate. We went out to IBM's global organization and the R&D centers and find a very good software we could use. And we managed to implement it in two months' time. This is the heart of the system where all images and passages are being processed. Over 99% of all pictures are correctly identified. So it's nice. This is how it should be all the time. Behind me you can see the traffic and the clock is 6 p.m. Before we had the congestion charging, the traffic was queuing up at this time of the day. I think it's a good idea because I think that we should take care of the environment in the city. The traffic went down with about 22% and uh, the air pollution was about 14% better. It's a huge international interest from different parts of the world, from uh, the United States, from Latin America, from China. And it's really a pressure to tell people not what we are planning to do, but what we actually have done in Stockholm. I voted for it, yes I did. Not my husband, so, <laughs> but I did. I think he is not thinking like me for the future. I'm thinking for the children and the grandchildren.